What is up, guys? Dave, Duncan, Kyle, back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. And for this review, Duncan, Kyle, and I have been checking out the new album from London based sludge doom band Tuscar. The band's new album, Matriarch, will be released on February 25th via Church Road Records, gentlemen. Ooh, of course it Ooh. is. <laughs> oh, hell. Church Road Records, eh? Like, who? Yeah. They Aye. are. They are making a name for themselves, mm-hmm. definitely. That that I was actually looking at the roster. It's like yesterday, I think it was. Their their roster is just getting ridiculous. And it's it, a lot of good just, bands out there, Dave. It, it keeps getting better. Like they yeah. just they're they're constantly like adding new bands. I think they announced um what was the one that I saw the other day? Grey Wave, I think it was called, like mm-hmm. in another kind of like shoegazy type band. Um and there was another one today, was it was it Buster or something like that? It was another one that Busted. Just, you know, what I go what? to school for. <laughs> How awesome would that be? On yes, I, 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 like, if, if busted me the Sludge album, I would jizz my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, ima- you imagine the year 3000 Sludge style? Oh, mm, mm, that mm. song is about potential paedophilia, but we won't get into that on this, this recording here. Let's not. Um, <laughs> Future anyway, paedophilia. Um, eh? <laughs> there we go. Time Cop would be a completely different Time Cop record. <laughs> time Cop would be a completely different movie if Jean Claude Van Damme went back in time and did a bit of fiddling. You know what I mean? Um, Jean Claude Van Damme, dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Two minutes in. Good job. Yeah. You guys were complaining about low energy levels. This oh. is what happens when you don't bring your game face. <laughs> I will run wild like Hulkamania all over this. <laughs> I will bust out the 22 inch pythons. Okay, so, um, Tuscar, um, <laughs> another band on uh, Church Road Records, um, obviously, um, formed in 2014. Um, this is their debut album. Uh, which follows up the band's 2019 EP, The Monolith Sessions. The album was recorded by Joe Clayton at No Studio and mastered at Audio Siege. (sighs) Brad, I love you, man. Every review. He's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel like he's he's taken up a second uh, second career as stalker of us because he's I, everywhere. <laughs> I, I think he might be omnipresent. <laughs> yeah, he could be. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that he's got that wee thing from Harry Potter. You know that thing that stops time. Mm. Maybe he's got that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Explain there's his lights behind Dave or be. a shrine to him. Yeah, <laughs> or or he's managed to work out clone technology. Oh uh, yeah, like uh, multiplicity. multiplicity. Yeah, <laughs> like, see, see, we've known each other too long, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although the idea of the, you know, the slightly damaged one, like a Brad Boatwright <laughs> version of that, just fucking up the mix, would be amazing. Just <laughs> all <Aw>, drums. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Anyway yeah anyway Tusker. that's a great film that's a great film actually I need to watch that again um okay yeah back on track um <laughs> so um are you are we ready for this gents um yes. this is this is a bit of a kicker right Tuscar a two piece band right now just Fuck just off, not two just let that sink in for a second just because as I was listening to this and just being like just relentlessly pummeled by its sheer heaviness and then i start to do a bit of research a bit of reading online and i'm seeing like two names keep coming up i'm like what there must be more there must be this must be a four or a five piece at least no no two piece we have tom dimmock on guitar and tyler hodges on drums and vocals that's the drummer that does the vocals yeah interesting and i was just like what that it's kind of blowing my mind right now um, because when that like that first track kind of like slowly builds with like mm-hmm. the kind of lightly distorted guitars and it's got a bit of kind of tribal type drumming nothing can prepare you for what's about to happen <laughs> when it kicks into gear and they unleash that first riff like the hairs on the back of my neck stood up I was just mm-hmm. like what the f- I was not expecting it at all I knew nothing about this band going in um, it is just, just colossal sounding. When that first riff kicked in, I was just like, "This is wow!" Like, and, and I, when I was reading online, I read a 
a little kind of description thing that they mentioned them and uh, they were referred to as uh, Sonic Doom. <laughs> and I was like, like that's a, like for that first track. It's a pretty good description, to be honest. Yeah. Like, um, it's also almost a Street Fighter move as well. Um, <laughs> yes, <but. yeah. laughs> um, this is yeah. This is like kind of like like Conan, Monolords, Slabdragger type heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they don't sound like a like a replica of of any of those bands. Um, there's, there's like similarities for sure. But um, Tuscar also have their own kind of blend the styles and ideas mm-hmm. um it's a little bit more like kind of dissonant in places a little bit more progressive as well um the riffs have that kind of like doomy sludgy weight to them but there's a there's a kind of fluidity to their sound that like almost pushes them into a more unique area of the genre um and i, I kind of loved how they opened this al- album up like the longest song <laughs> on the album like track one 12 minutes let's do this and i was like like that to me is like we are we're going to like hit you hard and give you pretty much no opportunity to get your bearings at all it's a statement of intent like yeah, if if, for sure. if it's your debut album and you're opening with a 12 minute song that's ballsy as fuck <laughs> yeah so. absolutely and it's not like to the last like few minutes of the track where they start to like pull back a little and the, the tracks like the track starts to fade out you know and you're able to kind of like take a breath and like almost brace yourself for what's coming next but the second track took a completely different route than I was expecting like I was expecting more of that like, kind of first track but the second track kind of prepares you for what's to come on the rest of Matriarch um, To the Sky is track two and it's it's not a typical like slow and doomy track like the opener is um, they hit you with something far more energetic and sludgy it's like it's got a groove it's got a, a riff you can really kind of move to and the vocals kind of accent that perfectly and um, there's even some blast beats thrown in for good measure oh yeah 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 um, why my, not Dave when yeah, home <laughs> if you're gonna yeah fucking go all in um, my, my only issue with the second track was I kind of wanted more like yeah. it was like four minutes and I was like oh I got to the end I was like why are you stopping there? <laughs> just, keep going. just keep going. Because you go for that like 12 minute track where you're just getting like pummeled into the four minute track. But, and when I got to the end, I was like, oh, what's what's coming next? Because I, I kind of need more of that. Um, and then they move on to um, the trees, the trees, the trees, um, which is like a really cool, like atmospheric kind of segue into um, Halcyon Guilt. Um, which kind of shows the band flexing more of that kind of progressive side I mentioned. It's like, it was like, I was listening, I was thinking, this is like a, like Tool meets a sludge version of Gojira, was like, yeah. it was going through my head. Um, really cool though. Um, and then you've got tracks like Shame, which feels a bit more, a bit more of a kind of emotional kind of outpouring vocally. Um, mm. And then they finish you off in like devastating fashion with uh, The Grave, which was uh, one of my highlights. I think it's, by far got one some of the best riffs on the album some of the best vocal hooks as well um but also has a really cool structure as well i love the, the kind of dynamic of the track there are lots of kind of ebbs and flows and stuff um and when they want to hit you with that gut punch like they set it up perfectly and then they just hit you unbelievably hard um that like that end riff just about gave me a stroke it was just ridiculous um yeah, I was I was really impressed with this. I think one of the most imp- impressive things about this release for me was just the balance of it. I thought, like after hearing the first track, that this was going to be, I thought it was going to be a, a very overwhelming listen. But as the album kind of unfolds, they they show you so many sides to their personality. Like, like some of it is like the audio equivalent of that like throat ripping move that Patrick Swayze does in Roadhouse. You know that <laughs> one, that, you know, that that bad boy. And then, but some of it is like unbelievably clever and and methodical as well like just and i think like as that last riff played out um it kind of hit me how monumental the the production is on this as well Mm -hmm. like joe clayton has done a fantastic job like i I love the stuff he's done with like mastiff and ward and bands like leech and stuff um but i think this might be my favorite thing he's done um that the sound and tone that he's gone for just exact like accentuates everything that's going on musically and um, it's a perfect fit for tuscar um and we've had like we've heard a lot of extremely heavy albums this year already but this was the first one that genuinely made me stop what i was doing when it kicked in um and it's partly down to the band um, but also down to the production and i think joe and brad as well have, have absolutely nailed it on this um 
Hadn't heard of this band before, but extremely impressed uh, with this in it for a debut. Like, wow, really, really good stuff. Um, if you check out online, they've got a few kind of live videos. Um, some are, are really cool. Some of the, the kind of monolith stuff they did, um, and like they really pull it off. You know, as as a two piece as well. I was thinking, how would how's this? How would this work live? But they, they pull it off like perfectly. The live videos are really cool. Um, what about you guys? How did you kind of get on with this one, Duncan? What do you think? Uh, yeah, this is this is super cool. Um, yeah. The what I loved about it, I know I know what you're saying in terms of the second track, uh, mm. maybe not giving you, like like teasing you and then giving you the goods and then being like, nah, we're just stopping there. Um, yeah. I like that. I really like that. I think that the, one of the smartest things this album does is it opens with a track which is so colossally ambitious and huge sounding but not repeated again anywhere else on the album it's almost yeah. like it's almost like it's it's not even set in the stage it's kind of like we we've got business to do here this is the title track let's get it out of the way and then let's introduce you to tusker mm. um because everything everything beyond that that first track's point is an exercise in really clever songwriting about taking the time to graft things in the right position yeah. and deliver I mean there are whole sections here where I was kind of like I can't remember the last time I heard a vocal line like mm. it, like, but it, it wasn't bothering me at all yeah. and that can sometimes become a, a bit of a grievance to me when I know there's some cool vocals in there but we're just not doing it for huge swaths of the album especially mm. in this genre um, it, to me it's kind of like almost you're, you have a vocalist or you don't have a vocalist um, I think as well on top of that vocally i love the vocals on this one the dude's voice reminds me of like kind of 1992 really angry snarly trent reznor mm. trent reznor has a really abrasive tone when he does his kind of angrier stuff on like the broken ep um and that's what this vocalist sounded like in his normal range he, mm. he, definitely extends beyond that um but that's kind of his default tone and it totally fits it's in a different register it's slightly higher than you would expect from a lot of doom vocalists who tend to go in a lower register unless they're you know doing a lot of melody mm. um what i loved about this was they aren't scared to do yeah. the quieter moments with the guitar they aren't scared to like you know just like open tracks in completely progressive ways and and kind of allow the audience to find their way into the song um, you're right by the time Grave hits uh, I, I, I was like well I mean <laughs> it's better be one of the best closers I've heard in a while or, and it was um, and the last riff is uh, like so ridiculous like uh, so that's how you close an album ladies yeah. and gents that is how you do it because <laughs> you like, it just like it, it was one of those moments where you're actually looking at the device <laughs> kind of trying to wonder what, like I, I don't often try and fathom technology but as I was listening through Bluetooth headphones at the device, I was just like, everything's weird. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like, there's no plug in this, and this is heavy, and nothing's like, this is just weird. Everything's weird. Um, I think the production is incredible. I think mm. it really, really aids this one. It's it's kind of pitch perfect in that the the drums sound huge. Um, mm. Those blast beats come through; they're not fucked with, which sounds really great. Yeah. Uh, but the guitar tone is fucking thick um but still room for those quieter moments to build up completely audible and then vocals sit perfect in the mix mm. um it's something that like you know from a band's perspective i'd be immensely proud uh to listen to this back for the first time because this i think encapsulates the band yeah. um not only with the ferocity but all those vulnerabilities and all those nuances that they have as well um, yeah, you're you're in for a trick on this one. Um, not any one song really sounds alike, although they're clearly all Tusker. You know, like yeah. the the guitar tone doesn't really change. Um, vocally, like I say, it's all the same. Drums, it's kind of you know, it, it all has that sound. But every single song starts off going in a different direction, and I, mm. I think that is something you would expect a band a lot. Well, you, I mean, when you think 2014 and this is a debut album, so they've been on the go eight years, but even mm. then, though, you expect 
that to come with the wisdom of a few albums out there, some album sales behind you, and then you can start doing this. Yeah. Um, and they've doing it right at the start. So this is it. This is. This is about as exciting as this genre gets, that kind of doomy sludge stuff. Yeah. We hear a lot of it, and a lot of it is very, not not basic, but it, it has a register, it has a key, and it has a tone, and as a result of that, it becomes fairly unmemorable six months in. Mm-hmm. There is nothing in Tusker that will not make me 100% remember every single second of this album six months from now. So mm. um, well done to them. It's a, it's a great fucking album. Nice. Uh, Kyle, what about yourself? My first note is, um, if Mastodon ate a death metal breakfast, you get Tusker. <laughs> 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 I mean, they've clearly got a lot of influences from that sort of side of things, which you can yeah. hear really well, but they're so unique in their way as well. I've mm. not really heard anything quite like this, so it's... I loved it all the way through, and I'm going to say they got... What I like is how they use just the two instruments. I mean, obviously, they've got bass and other guitar parts and stuff but they it's a drummer and a guitarist mm. and they used both of those instruments like to the full potential of what they can do they have the quieter bits and this uh, in the guitars and the drums and they do some crazy tapping stuff with the guitar and they do other parts that are full on riff fests and other bits that are lightly picked and stuff and it's a real dynamic album for me it was really like it was up and down and all over the place mm. um that first track 12 minutes i was like whoo boy <laughs> I got to stop looking at the track lengths when I when I listen to these things because Jesus Christ, I was like, oh, really? Are we going to have to sit through this? But then it didn't feel that long. No, it felt great. Yeah, like mm. you said, the my the, the hairs just started to stand up on their own. I was like, oh, oh boy! And then track two came on. I'm like, this is different. <laughs> yeah. And then track three came on, and it was I can't remember the name of it, but I was the just trees, like, the trees, the trees, the trees. That's the one. Yeah, that's the yeah. Tree. <laughs> the three trees, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I was, it was quite a quiet track, and I was just going through the track list, and I was like, why would you put such a quiet, calm track at track three? That makes no sense. Like, you need to keep the hype up. But then I remembered, wait, hold on, that that first track was 12 minutes long, so this feels yeah, like I'm track seven. minutes into this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it like this is, so it's perfect placement. It looks ridiculous when, when you look through the track listing. But, so that made me laugh to myself. I was like, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. You guys are great. I really like that. <laughs> I know we've touched on the production, but it's damn near perfect. It's just, there's no fuckery. The blast beats are, oh, I couldn't believe there was such natural sounding, amazing blast beats and mm. still huge sounding drums too. I mean, yep. obviously they cut off some reverbs and stuff because that's what you've got to do. Otherwise it gets a mess, but such attention to detail. It's amazing. I really liked it. And my favorite thing is that it's just so easy to identify what each song is yeah. and mm. which ones that just sound different from each other. They go off in different directions, even though the guitar tones and all that is, is pretty similar. Mm. And you can just listen to, you know, the trees, the trees, the trees, and be like, that's the trees. And yeah. this yeah. is the other one. And grave is grave because that ending, holy fuck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I enjoyed it a great deal. It's got a lot going for it. And I think, uh, how many albums are these guys in? Two, three. No One. debut album. <laughs> this is a debut. This is Fuck the debut. Off. They've got an EP. Yeah, but this EP, is yeah. the debut. Fuck off. This is the first album, Kale. No one has album any right one. to be this pissing good on their yeah. first fucking album. Even yeah. if they have been doing it for eight years. Yeah. yeah. What? This is album one. Yeah, this it sounds like album three or four. 100% yeah, hundred percent. Like the stuff they're doing, bands just don't tend to do that in their debut. Hmm. Well, we spoke about it on other reviews. Bands tend to throw everything at the wall on their first album because they never know if they're going to get a second <laughs> one so like it's everything absolutely everything to the wall and this is so measured like everything yeah. is so precise yeah I, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of baffling so yeah, yeah first album you know i hate tusker fuck him <laughs> yeah and to like to top all that off that there is just two guys like yeah you, you would think this yeah. was like like a, a team of individuals that have sculpted this sound, but yeah. this is a it's a duo. You know what I mean? Like, and every time I say it, I'm like, "What? Nah, mm. that can't be right." But and like, as you said, Kyle, there is <laughs> there is bass on this album. Of course, it's not like can. they've <laughs> they've removed it completely from their sound, um, but they've kind of mixed it and blended it in a way that it's not like a focal point at all. Mm. Um, it is there just to kind of thicken up the sound. Um, but then when they play live, you watch those live videos, like. If you don't even miss it like they've just the guitars are so loud that it's like <laughs> yeah nah, don't even need it they might have it on a backing track or something yeah it's cool yeah, it sounds probably. so live i mean it's yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah. um so 
ratings for this uh, debut from Tuscar. Um, yeah, as Duncan says, like this is this is top tier kind of doom, kind of sludge. Um, very unique sounding, fucking amazing production. Um, I think I think it's a pretty high scorer for me. I'd probably go four point five on this one. Uh, Duncan, what are you thinking? I'm there a hundred percent with you. That one of those bands that is genuinely exciting, and I, I want to see them live. I want to hear more albums. Like I, I just yeah. want everything Tusker at the moment. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Nice, uh, Kyle. Well, there's only two of them, so how can I give them more than two out of five? I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's four point five. It's a great <laughs> album. <laughs> They're just too good, and I kind of hate them a little bit. <laughs> That's right, Kyle. Okay. They're too good. <laughs> Tuscar Matriarch um, out on 25th of February on Church Road Records um, I'll put some links below to the band's Facebook and to their, their band cam and stuff so you can check it out let us know what you think once you've heard the album um, it's out very soon so um, drop some comments in below let us know what you think of the album happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it that is the review uh, we'll be back with a new review very soon but until then take care speak to you soon bye everyone bye